this weekend it's time for the cyclocross world championships and on the men's side we have a guarantee that we will see a brand new elite world champion with both Wout van Aert and Mathieu van der Poel missing the role of favourite falls onto two massive rivals from the junior categories. I've talked about Tom Pidcock before but now we go on to his great rival the most consistent rider of this season and arguably the most deserving rider this year, Ailey Isabeth. Ailey hails from the town of Bavikhove, a town at the edge of Kortrijk down in the south of Belgium, near Roubaix in fact, and it's around here that Ailey first learned his trade, starting at 11 years of age, even tasting victory at this young age a few times. By the age of 14, Isabeth was dominant, winning almost everywhere he went, even becoming Belgian champion in both cross and the mountain bike at his age category. He kept up similar dominance in the Neuerlinger category. In his first season he became Belgian champion and won in Kukulare. The next season he defend his Belgian title, win two rounds of the Neuerlinger Trophy round and 21 other crosses. For the 2013-14 season Isabit joined the junior categories and for the first time came onto the radar of most people. He would finish 5th in the World Cup standings in his debut year and take a handful of podium finishes. He would also again win in Ronce, take victory in Moerbeke Vaas and became Belgian champion for the 4th year running. The following year Ailey properly hit his stride, finishing no lower than 3rd all year and taking 22 wins from 26 starts. Ailey would win all but one round of the World Cup and all but one round of the Super Prestige winning the overall of both obviously. He would also defend his Belgian title again and added the junior European title. Despite being the favourite to win at the World Championships in Tabor, he would have to settle for silver though, being defeated on the day by Denmark's Simon Andreassen, a man who may be more familiar to those of you who follow mountain bike. By the following season Ailey would move up categories once more, becoming an under 23 rider for the first time. He again would not need much time to adapt at all, winning three World Cups, five Super Prestiges and two trophy rounds. This would allow him to win the overall of the World Cup and the Super Prestige. Ailey would add two more wins, the standalone driver course in Overijse and in Zolder, Ailey would become world champion under 23, taking a very first rainbow jersey. During this season, Ailey would take advantage of his under-23 status to race a handful of elite races too. His elite debut came at the Gepe Neerpelt, where he finished 15th. But he would improve and take some very impressive 5th places in Ardoya and Leuven. The next year, Ailey would seem to struggle somewhat, only taking a World Cup win in Fiuji and only winning the Super Prestige Gavre. He would however win 4 trophy rounds and the overall of that competition. Isabit would again win the Classic at Overijse and would take the Sluitingsprijs in Urs Moller. During his defence of his world title, however, Ailey would come up against arguably his most formidable foe for the first time, the cold. Isabit became undercooled and struggled to a 17th place in the ice and snow of Biel. Funnily enough, the world title this year went to Joris Nieuwenhuis, who nowadays rides the Tour de France. Ailey would, however, this year managed to take his first elite podiums, finishing second at the EKZ Cross in Baden, Switzerland, before taking a third place at the Beere Cross in Meulebeke. Isabeth would this season also race the Belgian Championships amongst the elites, finishing in a fairly respectable 19th place. The following season would see his elite World Cup debut as he travelled to the States for the first time. Isabit would finish 26th on the debut at the highest level in Iowa City. A week later he would take an impressive 11th in Waterloo. Throughout the year Ailey would dominate in Belgium, but especially in the World Cups he'd find himself coming up against this young kid from Great Britain. Throughout the season Ailey and Tom Pidcock would battle it out time and time again. By the end Ailey would count two World Cups but relinquish the overall to Pidcock. He would also win the Super Prestige Hoogstraten, dominate the trophy, winning seven rounds in the overall. The biggest battles, however, would be at the Euros and the Worlds. 
In Tabor, where Izabit had missed out on a world title in years prior, he would fight those demons off to beat Pidcock in a sprint and become European champion. In Valkenburg, Izabit would again relinquish demons, this time by retaking the under-23 world title. Throughout the year, Izabit would again perform well with the elite, a 7th place in Ruddevorde being his first top 10 in a major race. By 2018-19, Ailey was essentially an elite racer, taking his first World Cup top 10 in Waterloo with a 7th place. Izabit would become a regular fixture in the top 10 of elite races from this point on, taking the top 10 as well in Ruddevorde and an impressive one on the Koppenberg. Again in the under 23 races he would battle Tom Pidcock, this year taking 3 World Cup wins but failing to take any overall titles, finding Pidcock to just be a little bit too strong. Ailey would run into a similar issue during both the Euros and the Worlds, finishing second to Pidcock on both occasions. In the national championships, Izabit would of course not face Tom Pidcock. However, Izabit again chose to race with the elites, meaning he was up against far more established riders, but he would nonetheless finish in a fairly impressive fourth place. By the 2019-20 season, Izabit moved up to the elites full time, and boy was he good. His season debut came in Eiklo, where he finished second, before he'd take his first World Cup win and by extension his first podium at the World Cup in Iowa City. This win was also Ailey's first elite win outright. Seven days later, Izabit would repeat the feat and win the World Cup Waterloo as well, going on to dominate the early season. Ailey would win in Gieten, he would win in the Koppenberg as well. Having taken seven victories in nine starts, it would take the return of a certain Mathieu van der Poel to unseat Izabit. But interestingly, Izabit would not drop down to second constantly. He would fall lower too, finishing fifth in Ruddevoort and Hammer, and even as low as 13th in Coxerde. Of course, Aidy still performed well too. A second place in Tabor was pretty impressive, and he pushed van der Poel to within six seconds at the European Championships in Silvel. He would take silver. The rest of Izabit's season would be similar, chasing the coattails of Van der Poel whilst proving himself to be arguably the best of the rest. A fairly decent performance, but let's keep in mind, a first year elite rider. By the end of the year, Izabit could count on 11 elite victories, 4 World Cups, 2 Super Prestiges and 1 X2O trophy, as well as 4 standalone crosses. Izabit also won the X2O trophy overall and added to his European silver with a silver medal at the Belgian Nationals too. At the Worlds in Dubendorf, Ailey would come up against a course that didn't really suit him, struggling home to a 10th place finish in the end. During the 2020-21 season, Izabit would again perform very well, only failing to finish in the top 10 on 5 occasions, 3 of which were DNFs. Izabit would start off victorious in Lokeren, also winning in Ruddevoorde, the Koppenberg, and in Rosmalen, Ailey became European champion for the first time, winning a first special jersey amongst the elite riders. It would take up until December 20th for Izabit to fail to finish in the top four for the first time. In Namur, Izabit had his derailleur break right at the start of the race, meaning he was effectively out from the gun. He'd end up finishing in 31st, and Izabit's bad luck would continue after a 5th place in Herentals came Zolder, where Izabit was involved in this incident. After fears of an elbow fracture and an ambulance trip, the damage was not too great, no breakage. However, Izabit was certainly still in pain, and this pain caused him to fail to finish in both Hulst and the Nationals in Merlebeke. Izabit would slowly improve, but again was unable to really flourish at the Worlds, still somewhat recovering. He'd finished 7th in the end in Ostende. By the end of the year, Izabit had defended his X2O overall title and took victory in two Super Prestiges, two X2Os, two standalone crosses and the Euros. This season, Ailey has been almost unhinged, being a cut above the rest in most occasions. Starting his season with three straight wins in the early Warbot races, before kicking his season off properly in the USA, with the victories in Waterloo and Iowa City, between these wins, he would finish second in Fayetteville. Throughout this whole year, Ailey has missed out on the top 10 on only three occasions. 
during the Aza course where Izabit deliberately held back to conserve energy, but interestingly the other two lower finishers have come with a 12th place at the Euros and a DNF at the Nationals in Middelkerke, where during the normal day to day races Izabit has been dominant in situations where he knows he's done it before, he's almost effortlessly the best. But weirdly, when the stakes have grown this year, Izabit seems to have struggled a little. When Wout van Aert came, Izabit fell behind him, which makes some sense, everybody did. But just as much as he started to fall behind Wout, he fell behind Tonart and Michael van Turenhout too. It's a strange phenomenon. Nonetheless, Ailey can count on truly stellar season, with 13 victories to his name, an impressive 6 World Cup victories, 3 Super Prestiges, the X2O round in the Koppenberg, and three ATS crosses. Izabit has this year also won the World Cup overall for the first time. In six days time, Izabit will take to the start of the World Championships in Fayetteville, where he could be heading towards his greatest victory yet. He's certainly amongst the favorites. Ailey is still only 24 years old. He's barely an elite rider by his direct age, but he nonetheless has a truly stacked palmares. Over the past three years, Ailey has amassed a total of 31 victories, a seriously impressive amount. Amongst these wins, Ailey can count 10 World Cups, 7 Super Prestiges and 4 X2O rounds. Ailey has also got 2 X2O overalls under his belt and has this season won the World Cup. He's also still in the running to take the Super Prestige overall as well. Izabit can of course also count on a season in the European Champions jersey and will be looking to add a third world title, a first elite one, this week in Fayetteville. Izabit is a very confident guy and this shows in the way he chooses to race. His start of racing generally relies on him being pretty dominant. When he is the best, he blows the others out the water. But when he isn't, he does seem to fall back a little bit. Obviously there's exceptions, Fayetteville for example being a good example from the past year. Izabit sometimes has this label of being a bit cocky and believing himself to be on the level of Peacock and pushing Van Aert and Van der Poel. He's copped some criticism in the past for these beliefs, but looking back I don't really ever recall Ailey saying anything more than him affirming his belief that he can compete with them, which is a mindset you'd expect from an elite competitor. Imagine if he just went, no Tom's too good, I can't be asked to race him. It doesn't make any sense, of course he wants to beat them. Throughout this season Ailey has really grown on me as a person. His openness and excitement towards racing in, for example, the USA and Valdizol has painted him in a much more sympathetic light and shown that there is a pretty chill guy under there. Izabit excels in his cornering. His shorter stature means he can bend himself through corners quicker than almost anybody else. Adding on to this, Ailey is very punchy, being able to rattle up short steep climbs at an incredible pace. Izabit is at his best on faster courses, the ones with fairly hard ground underneath him and fairly technical corners. Historically, Ailey's major weakness has been sand, but this year he's proven to have rectified that for a large part. You don't win Coxada without being good in the sand, for example. The other major weakness Izabit struggles with is the weather. Ailey struggles in colder conditions. He's left races undercooled on numerous occasions and tends to struggle during the coldest parts of the season, whilst often being at his best early in the year during the autumnal parts. Izabit is like everybody else gunning to take a first world title next week in Fayetteville. After that, Ailey will finish out the rest of his major cross season presumably, completing both the Super Prestige and the X2O Trophy. I'd imagine Ailey will also ride the remaining ATS crosses and probably the Slautingspreis in Osmala, but I'm not really sure, there's no complete confirmation of that. As for a road season, I'm not really sure. Izabit hasn't raised much on the road, and whilst the general consensus is that he should give it a go, there's nothing to indicate that he personally really wants to. Ailey Izabit is the most likely candidate to bridge the gap towards the big three riders in the men's field. As a younger rider, Ailey has time to build up a larger engine, which would allow him to potentially compete at the top on courses that suit him quite well. Should Ailey take the rainbow bands in Fayetteville, then he would be the most deserving rider to do so, absolutely. Ailey has been dominant this year, and a stint in the rainbow jersey would be completely justified.